perimenopause years, this is after 35. So if you're 37, 38, and all of a sudden you're getting a hot flash, don't panic. That is common to ha- more common now at, in the late 30s than ever before. There's an environmental reason for that. But at 35, what we know clinically is that your progesterone is the first hormone to start to decline. So I want to talk about that for a moment because progesterone serves many purposes for you. The first is progesterone is a precursor to GABA. It calms you. These progesterone mellows you out, GABA mellows you out. And progesterone, when you make, your body makes progesterone around day 20 and in that ovulation window, what that progesterone is doing is going into a GABA receptor site and calming you but it's the first one to go. So if you're starting to notice more anxiety as you move through your 30s, that might be the first thing that you that you become aware of before any changes in your period. I want when that anxiety hits, I want you to think that that is a day that you're going to want to lean more into your hormone feasting foods. Now, you might be asking me, well, what if I'm 37 and it's day nine of my cycle, estrogen's supposed to be building, and I'm highly anxious? Okay, well, this is where, this is going to get really nuanced, so follow me here. This is where it would be appropriate to fast. You're on day nine of your cycle. You could actually do a fast, like a 15, 16-hour fast, and then when you open your eating window up, eat hormone feasting foods, bring glucose up, go more into your sweet potatoes, into your potatoes, into the legumes, bring your glucose up and see if that helps calm you. We know that as your, that your body often needs more glucose, not just to make progesterone, but it actually needs more glucose to make a neurotransmitter called serotonin and it needs more glucose to make GABA. So GABA will calm you. It's a neurotransmitter that will calm you. Already talked about that, but serotonin also gives you a calming state. So it might be that you need to splash in some of these hormone feasting foods, times when anxiety hits you, even if your cycle says you can go keto, it might be that it's time to be able to to just step out one afternoon and add a few carbs in. You're gonna need to play with that. And that is highly nuanced and I don't wanna confuse you, but I wanna give you options. That's the the purpose of this podcast is to give you some options for those of you who are hitting some of those hurdles, okay? So now, what I also know at 35 is that progesterone is going to go down anxiety is going to potentially go up. And over the next 10 years, from 35 to 45, your cycles are going to change. The length of your cycle is going to change. And with that is going to come some signs of spotting. It's going to come, uh, you're going to get a cycle every two weeks, or you'll get a cycle every two months. Things really rapidly change. Sleep is going to change. Moods change. Mental clarity changes. And this is all ushered in by the loss of progesterone. So it becomes incredibly important that you are tracking your cycle. I started mapping my cycle on a Clue app when I was uh, in my early 40s for the first time in my life. So if you are not tracking your cycle now to my perimenopausal women, I want to give you an idea that it it's important you start tracking. The other big overarching idea that I want you to understand is that progesterone and estrogen work in together as a team. When estrogen goes up, progesterone comes in to keep estrogen in check. So what you might notice throughout your menopausal journey or perimenopausal journey is that all of a sudden you get a big influx of estrogen 
and you might not have enough progesterone to be able to keep her in control. What that means is on the days where there's high estrogen and not enough progesterone to keep her in control, you might feel wound up. You might feel highly agitated. You might feel um, like somebody put, you know, gave you 10 cups of coffee. So you also might start to notice that your breasts are more tender or you might get more bloated. These are all a sign that your estrogen progesterone balance may be out of, you might be out of sync. If that is the case, that is a day you may again want to add in more of these hormone feasting foods to course correct so that you can bring in a little bit of progesterone um, at a time that might not make sense to bring in progesterone it could be helpful to move you along those symptoms the other key piece about when estrogen goes high and you don't have enough progesterone or you're not clearing estrogen enough and you're getting bloated you're getting constipated you've got to increase your vegetables. So we've got to make sure as we move into our 40s, like your lifestyle matters more than ever and you are not going to be able to get away with less intake of green, specifically green leafy vegetables. Try it for a week. Those of you that are perimenopausal and you're bloated or you're really struggling with some of the symptoms of perimenopause, like sleep issues, or you're spotting a lot, try just massively improving the influx of green leafy vegetables for just one week and see what happens to your symptoms because it might be that those green leafy vegetables are needed to feed the microbiome that breaks down estrogen because you're no, you're losing progesterone so you need a little more support to break estrogen down and you can support it by giving your bacteria the microbes in your gut the food it needs by supporting your liver and supporting pro, uh, your progesterone production Okay, I got to interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called a beginner's guide to a fasting lifestyle. And all you've got to do is click here and you can jump right in. So that was a common question that we've seen. And I know that is really, really nuanced. Now, what happens if your cycle is really long? I want to address that. You're 45 you're getting your cycle every two weeks. I'm sorry, every two months. So it's 60 days. What I want you to do is you're going to go all the way through the 30 day fasting reset. When you get to day 30, I want you to just start over again because the goal is not to stay in the nurture phase for months. That is most likely going to be a recipe to gaining weight. So what the perimenopausal woman does is she goes through the 30-day reset. The way I mapped it out, you might find some variations as you do it more. And then when you hit day 30, you go through it again. And if you are getting into these places where the hormone feasting foods are causing you to gain weight, then for my perimenopausal women and even the postmenopausal women, you can tack on some longer fasts um, so that it, you are balancing out the fat burner and sugar burner systems. So make sure you don't stay in the, the bottom line is really make sure you do not stay in the nurture phase for weeks and weeks and weeks. The nurture phase was meant to stay in a couple of days to a week. If your period doesn't show up, go back into another power phase and start the whole cycle again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm literally speaking straight from the book. So make sure you get the book so you understand that. Now, my women that are getting periods every two weeks, this might be the harder one for the perimenopausal women because if it's coming every two weeks, then you're going to start by looking at, okay, day one, you're going to do focus on ketobiotic and some of the longer fasts. And then you might need to shift five days later into a hormone feasting experience. So what I would do is I would take the fasting cycle and the 30 day fasting reset and I would just cut it in half. So this is what it would look like. The first 10 days of your menstrual cycle, you're meant to be in a ketobiotic state, bringing glucose down, bringing insulin down and going into the longer fast. If you have a period every two weeks, 
don't make that 10 days, make it five days. And then I want you to switch into the manifestation phase. The manifestation phase, you're bringing glucose up, you're doing hormone feasting foods, you're, you're, you're keeping your fast around 15 hours. So at day six, you would move into the manifestation phase and you would do that for three days. So give your, we're just sort of simulating, maybe you're ovulating during that time. Then after three days, you're gonna move back into um, another power phase for five days. So we're now at 15 days where the first five, we've gone ketobiotic longer fast. Then we've taken three days and we've just shifted to hormone feasting, shorter fast. Then we're back five more days to a, a longer fast ketobiotic. And then we switch into the nurture phase and you stay in that for any, until you bleed again. So that might be one day, that might be a week. Don't stay there longer than a week. So you might have to simulate a shorter cycle with the food and fasting. Again, very, very nuanced. This is a conversation, if I've just confused you, I want you to understand that this is a conversation that I have with my patients. These are the modifications that we make together. And because this is a book, because this is a, a podcast, I'm just giving you some of those modifications. Now go play with them and see how that all works for you. Um, so that's what you do if you are getting a cycle very, very quickly every couple of weeks and you're in your perimenopausal years. Now, the focus for the perimenopausal women that I really encourage you to look at is you are losing estrogen, which is making you more insulin resistant. Every single menopausal symptom is going to be worse when you become insulin resistant. So I want you to focus on keeping glucose, yourself glucose and insulin sensitive. Of course, the week before your period, we want you to bring your, your glucose up, but you in general, I wanna know for my perimenopausal women that you're able to switch in to a fat burning ketogenic state very effortlessly. And that when you are eating foods that are higher on the glycemic index, that you're pairing those foods with protein and you're pairing them with fat so they don't end up getting these huge glucose spikes. A, a, a nice little glucose, glucose lift, phenomenal. A huge glucose spike, never a great idea. The other thing for my perimenopausal women that I want you to focus on is that not only are you trying to keep yourself insulin sensitive, but if you do put a glucose monitor on, I want to see that you're recovering from a meal very quickly. So I'll use myself as an example. I've got a glucose monitor on right now. Um, whenever at 53 and in this transitional year, whenever glucose goes up or whenever I eat a meal, uh, if I see glucose spike too high, like a high for me would be like 130. The other day I had a banana and it went up to like 130, 140. The first thing I'm asking myself is how quickly is it coming down? The banana, it came down within minutes. My blood sugar went right back down to a, a normal state um, or, where, or the pre-meal state. So I knew I was, my insulin was doing the job it needed to do to drive glucose into the cell. So I knew that I was in good shape there. So for my perimenopausal women, 35 to 55, the name of the game for you is to minimize how many spikes of glucose you're getting in a day. You don't want five major spikes into the 120, 130 range throughout the day. One with a quick recovery would be fine. Two with a quick recovery may be okay. But think of it, every time your glucose comes up and drops and then it goes up and then it drops, that puts you on an emotional roller coaster that your, your hormones are already on an emotional roller coaster. So we want to avoid that. So make sure the name of the perimenopausal game is stabilizing that blood sugar. You can do that by adding in protein to every meal, adding in fat, with every meal, even the week before your period. The last fun hack I like for my perimenopausal women is go for a walk after you eat. Uh, do squats, air squats after you eat. Those are proven techniques that will help regulate blood sugar. 
um, have a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I did a YouTube video on that for you eat. Um, these are great hacks. Okay, you trying to maximize your weight loss? Apple cider vinegar may be the key. Go check out this video where I show you exactly when, how, and why you wanna use it for weight loss. Apple cider vinegar changes your microbiome of your gut. This good bacteria is gonna help to bring your blood sugar down and make it so that you can switch over into the fat burning state